Childhood lasts 9.46 million minutes. What do you want your kids to do with their 10 million minutes in your house? According to Dr. Scott Sampson's book, How to Raise a Wild Child, the average American child spends just four to seven minutes a day playing freely outdoors, but spends four to seven hours a day on a screen. Now, if we're generous and we take this upper bound of free play seven minutes, that equates to 46,000 minutes of their childhood spent outdoors. Maybe it doesn't sound too bad. But now if we look at this lower bound of screen time, this four hours a day on a screen, that equates to 1,576,800 minutes spent staring at a screen. That seems a little out of balance to me. If you're a mom, you probably are the person who has the most influence in your kid's life and how they spend their time. It's up to you to decide your, what your family's culture and mission will be. In his book, The TechWise Family by Andy Crouch, Andy Crouch says, if we don't learn to put technology in its proper place, we will miss out on many of the best parts of life in a family. I completely agree. So if you want to be intentional in, so if you want to be intentional about how much time your family spends on screens, and if you want to have technology in its proper place, let's just start with one technology that surrounds us all: screens, whether it's TVs, computers, tablets or phones they're pretty hard to avoid in our modern age. The goal we've set for our family is for our kids to spend as little amount of time on screens as possible. And for my husband and I to spend as little amount of time on screens when our kids are around. Now we have to use our computers and our phones to do our work, but we don't need to have screens be a big part of our family life. You may be wondering, okay, that sounds really great, but how do we do that? Well, we've set out a few guidelines for our family that I'd like to share with you. The first one is that we don't have a TV in our house. We don't have TVs, we don't have tablets. All we have are two laptops for my husband and I to do our work when our kids are not around and my husband and I each have a phone. There are no screens in our, in our family that our kids can access by themselves or that are meant just for their entertainment. We have three very limited opportunities that we let our kids watch TV. The first is for once a week, our hairbrushing routine. On Sunday afternoons, we shower our kids and we sit them all down and we brush their hair. And this again, lasts about an hour, an hour and a half, and that's it for screen time on their typical week. It is very controlled. We are all watching a show together and I am with them aware of all the content they're consuming. So they're never alone in a room consuming content with me not really knowing what they're watching. They each get to pick one show, on my computer and it always has to be from PBS Kids. The second instance we will let our kids watch some TV is if they are very sick. And I'm talking like over 103 degree fever, not getting out of bed. Maybe on one of these days, I'll let them watch an hour of TV. It doesn't mean that they stay home and they watch eight hours of TV. It means they read, listen to audiobooks, sleep, do crafts, play with some little toys in their bed, and then maybe get to watch an hour of TV. And finally, the third instance that will let them watch TV, and this happens very rarely, is if we are in a long car ride. The car ride has to be greater than one hour for us to let them watch a show. Usually what this looks like is if we know we're driving a long way to go visit some family members is we will get some movies out of our church library and we will let them watch a show for an hour or so on our trip. Again, this is a small, small part of the way we'll spend our trip. First we'll play I Spy, then we'll do some coloring, then we'll listen to audiobooks, and then when we're all getting a little antsy, maybe then we will let them watch a show. In all of these instances, you can see that technology is in its proper place. We're using it as a tool to help our kids sit still while we brush their hair, or to help them get through a sick day or a long car ride. What this also means is that they are not getting screens when we're grocery shopping, for short car rides, while they're waiting for their sister's gymnastics class to end, while they're waiting in a doctor's office. And it means that our kids are not sitting on a screen even when I 
desperately need a break. Now, if you're a stay-at-home mom of young kids, I know that there are many times that you need a break, but we have made screens a non-option in our family, which also means that they're never asking for it, they're never whining for it, and I'm not having to deal with that post-screen monster syndrome, which I just made up, but basically it's when your kids have watched a half hour, an hour TV, you ask them to shut it off, they whine that they don't want to, and then they act like absolute monsters with hijacked brains for an hour because their brain has gone into some crazy TV mode and can't get out of it. So you may be wondering what we do instead. Well, we do lots of things. We enjoy each other. We do puzzles. We play games. We do crafts. We let the kids play freely on their own. They entertain each other. They play with their toys while I get stuff down around the house or I cook dinner. They help me with tasks. Our kids are able to fold towels and put laundry away and set the table. Our kids learn to talk to each other and to advocate for themselves when they need alone time rather than when they're antsy just saying, I wanna watch a show, our kids learn to say, I need some alone time and go find a spot where they can quietly read books or listen to an audiobook. And most importantly, our kids have learned to respect me when I've asked for some alone time to cook dinner or to just get the break I desperately need. What this means is that I'm not rewarding bad behavior with screen time. When the kids are going crazy and I need a break, I'm not saying, here, go watch a show so I can get alone, which never ends up feeling good. What they're learning is, you guys have a lot of energy. I need some alone time or I need to get something done. You need to go play outside or play up in your room and give me some space. And they are learning to respect that boundary. We live in an old house with really old steam radiator. So if you're hearing hissing and buzzing, apologies for my heat <laughs> going as I record this video. Just to give you some whys of why we do this, because if you don't have a really strong why, when there is pushback, you're just gonna say, oh, whatever, go, go watch a show. The first reason that why we do this is because God created so much beauty around us and in us, and we don't wanna miss out on that. We wanna enjoy spending time together, and we wanna enjoy getting outside and spending time in God's creation, rather than having our head or our eyes just glued to screen and missing out on so much life. I guarantee you no one has ever been on their deathbed and saying, I wish I spent more, more time watching TV. Our second reason of why we do this is our kids are better behaved. Again, they're not whining for TV. They're not asking for it. They're not whining after we've shut the TV off. Our kids have learned to sit and wait patiently when they need to. Honestly, most adults can't even do this anymore. When was the last time you were in line at the grocery store and every adult had their phone or in an elevator, every adult scrolling their phone? This is an important skill for our kids to learn that, hey, there are gonna be times when you're bored and you either, either need to be creative and find things to do or you can learn to sit and wait patiently and think and process and pray and talk to those around you. A third reason is our kids are not learning things we don't want them to be. The truth is, Anything that your kids can see in a screen is out of your control. So when they are watching a screen, I make sure I'm always with them. But once they've seen it, they've seen it. And there are a lot of things, behaviors, scary stuff that I honestly do not want my kids watching, at least not at their young ages. The fourth reason we don't have screens in our house is it forces us to be more creative. It forces us to get outside when we're bored. It forces our kids to do imaginative play from their own brain rather than just acting out whatever they last saw on a Disney show. And finally, it forces me as a mom to create a simple rhythm for our family rather than just filling the dead time with screens. So what do you want your family culture to be like? Because this video isn't just about whether or not your kids should watch TV. It's really about how do you want your family to spend their time? Do you want your family culture to be one of presence and peace and calm and connecting with each other? Or do you want it to be one of absence discontentment and just constantly consuming content and living in these different social media worlds? Do you want your kids to be resilient and imaginative and have a love for God's creation? Or do you want them to be impatient, 
easily bored and always just looking for that next dopamine hit. It is up to you. You may get pushback from your spouse. You'll definitely get pushback from your kids if they're used to spending a lot of time on screens. But don't give up. Create the family that you want. It is worth it. And I would love you to join me on this journey as we look at different ways we can create the family and the home that we want that intentionally is choosing how they want to live and what is important to them.